it has such possibilities. And uh, I just don't think we've quite fulfilled it yet. William Barton Quarton was born in Algona in 1903 before radio and before television. But his life would parallel the new technologies, leading him in his early adult years across the country, working for business giant Andrew Mellon and inventor Thomas Edison. And that was a wonderful experience. He was a wonderful guy. Despite Edison's more unique attributes. <laughs> he was a strange fellow. Horton's career travels ended when he returned to Iowa in 1931, working for radio station KWCR and later facilitating the station's merger with WMT. Years later, during World War II, he would succeed his own brother Sumner to become station manager of WMT. During those early years, Corton joined other station leaders to hire a journalist they would share to report from Washington, D.C. Their pick? Walter Cronkite. That was another one of those lucky things. It worked out for Waller, too. They, <laughs> CBS heard him and, and hired him, and we lost him. But he stayed uh, friendly. Friendly enough that Cronkite came to Cedar Rapids to celebrate WMT's 35th anniversary and his friend in 1957. Of course, this was after Corton's biggest achievement, bringing television to eastern Iowa, a process that was far from easy. We had quite a little pot saved up, but not enough. So I went to my banker here to try to get an extra $300,000, and I couldn't get it. That's the equivalent of nearly $3.4 million today. Bankers just didn't believe in television, but Quarton did, so his dream turned into reality. Today, they began raising the antenna sections to the top of the tower. That day would come on September 30th, which just happened to be the same day as Game 2 of the World Series between the Brooklyn Dodgers and New York Yankees. But NBC had the broadcast rights to the World Series, and Broadcast Park would be a CBS affiliate. So Corden sent sales manager Lou Van Nostrand to New York to ask permission to air the game. NBC said yes for $5,000. Van Nostrand remembered Corton's reaction. Where do you propose to get the $5,000? And I said, well, that's, that's your problem. That's not mine. Corton says NBC never asked for their money, and he never reminded them. Finally, the big day arrived, and Corton would be the man to welcome Eastern Iowa to television. This is a great day for us, and I hope it is for you, too. Of course, just like today, the first broadcast was a stressful one as they scrambled to tune in the feed. And the engineer says, I can't get him, I can't get him. And we didn't know whether we had a, a program or not. But they did find the game just in time. Quarton would continue to lead our efforts here at Broadcast Park for 15 years. In that time, we earned the first of two prestigious Peabody Awards in 1955. Take it away in full spectrum color. Made the transition to color in 1967. A band of thunderstorms about 15 to 20 miles wide. And became one of the first stations in the country to utilize radar in our weather coverage. Yeah, there was always something new in broadcasting. Corton retired in 1968, but continued to shape television as we know it today. He helped create Iowa PBS, growing one Des Moines station into the statewide network we now know. And in the 1980s, he created Cablevision, bringing the new television medium into the smallest communities in Iowa. It was a wonderful business. And still is. William B. Corton passed away in 2007 at the age of 104. But his legacy lives on here in Cedar Rapids and in his countless philanthropic efforts and contributions to the community he loved. Nick Weig, Iowa's News Now.